They don't come with banners or battle cries, but when night falls in rural Brazil, they storm in like an invading army, tusked, armored, and angry. Hundreds of them. Each one a 150 kilo wrecking machine. And how do farmers fight back? With shovels. In Brazil, farmers are turning cropland into battlegrounds building kilometers of muddy, boar-stopping moats that just might outsmart nature's most unstoppable invader. No electricity, no bullets, just gravity and grit. Stick around, because by the end of this story, you'll ride shotgun over the longest anti-boar trench in South America, the Great Wall of Soy, and decide for yourself, are shovels the new shotguns? This is no metaphor. These hogs are real, and they hit like tanks. Flattening soy fields, ripping cassava from the ground like weeds, and smashing fences as if they were paper. Wild boars don't sneak, they invade. In just four hours, a single raid can torch thousands of dollars and turn a season of sweat into a smoldering overdraft. So the farmers adapted, and what they built? Locals call it the Great Wall of Soy. It started innocently enough. 35 years ago, a few European boars slipped into Brazil's southern forests, probably escapees from high fence hunting ranches. But they didn't stay purebred for long. They bred with native pigs, and what emerged was a biological nightmare. The Java Porco, a super hog, Smarter, faster, hungrier. Now over 2.5 million strong, they roam 22 states, tearing through cropland like outlaw biker gangs, looking for their next bar fight. Farmers tried everything, barbed wire, electrified fences, sound cannons. The hogs hurtled, tunneled, or bulldozed right through it. As one agronomist joked, if you want to test a security system, Give it to a wild pig. Out of options, the farmers turn to history's oldest defense, the moat. But this isn't some fantasy castle. It's diesel-powered, GPS-guided warfare. Before the first shovel hits clay, engineers sweep fields with ground-penetrating radar to avoid slicing into hidden gas lines or irrigation systems. One wrong jab and a $400,000 tractor becomes a fireball. Then the dig begins. Two meters deep, three wide, 30-ton excavators carve earth like surgical blades. The spoil piles up into berms that double as flood barriers. Steel plates form makeshift bridges by day, then locks shut at night. Flashing strobes warn truckers not to drive into their own defenses. Reflective stakes guide harvesters through the fog like runway lights. Crude? Yes. Effective? Absolutely. In Mato Grosso do Sul, 14 farming families banded together to dig a 4.6-kilometer trench around their shared cropland. 3,200 hectares of soy, corn, and pasture. They called it Soy Berea, a tongue-in-cheek tribute to Siberia, only this front line sizzles under a tropical sun. And almost overnight, everything changed. Wild boar attacks dropped from 28 to just three per month. Repair costs plummeted 92%. Crop yields jumped 18%. One harvest later, there was so much grain that trucks lined up for hours just to weigh in. But victory isn't guaranteed. 
Rain chews away trench walls. Without side drains, the moat becomes a mosquito factory, or worse, a ramp for the next pig invasion. Poorly marked gaps have already swallowed two tractors and nearly flipped a combine. Topography matters too. Flat soy country is ditch heaven, but hill farms, that's ditch hell. One blast of dynamite triples the cost and a landslide can erase weeks of work in seconds. And if the trench works too well, there's the question, where did the hogs go? Are they starving behind the wall or just torching someone else's valley? So why not just shoot them or poison them? Because rifles cost money. Poisons risk livestock in the ecosystem. And fences, pigs short them out with a single root sniff. A trench, on the other hand, is a one-time investment. No power, no bait, no wires. And now the trenches are getting smart. Some farmers lay fiber optic cable through the berms. If the wall erodes, the line kinks and sends an alert straight to their phones. Others fly AI-guided thermal drones to patrol their perimeter at midnight. One farm even deployed a self-driving skid steer that rolls around the moat at 3 a.m., patching weak spots using buried pressure sensors. Across just eight farms, those upgrades saved over 3.2 million reais in three seasons. Silos overflowing with soy. Boars turning back at the moat's edge. A biologist tracking a GPS collared sow, her root bending neatly around each new trench. This isn't peace, it's breathing room. And until science delivers gene drive sterilization or lab grown boar steaks, the best weapon is still a ditch. So imagine it, 200 tusk tanks charging toward your hometown. Do you grab a rifle, lease a helicopter, or carve a two meter moat? Drop your battle plan in the comments. Best one gets pinned and might shape our next deep dive on the South Africa's laser scarecrows. Like, share, and hit subscribe so you don't miss what happens when beetle larvae become burger patties. Stay curious, stay sharp, and keep building walls the boars can't climb.